Hello and welcome to Panther of Geek. You join us for our first look at the Codex Genius of the Cults. Yay! Now, this has been all over the internet. Um, <laughs> even I've been looking at bits on the internet of this because mm -hmm. I've been really looking forward to it coming out. But this is uh, an unopened copy, obviously. So I've only seen bits on the internet. So I've no idea what the rest of the Codex is like. All exciting stuff. Um, We've both been excited for this, to be quite honest, haven't we? I've been super excited. Yeah. Not since the Death Watch, can't remember that was the last one. Not since, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the last two codexes that came out, I've been really up for. Mm. Uh, we've also got the data cards there as well. There you go. Um, might show them later if we've got time. Let's uh, have a look at the decks though. Nice and purple. Nice and purple. Yep. Now we've got the symbol. New Silly Cults, the Insidious Curse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the contents. You can see a lot of seen the contents already, that's one of the things that was leaked. What's that? Cool. Oh the Goliath uh, yeah, drill. Uh, they're awesome then. Um so let's keep going. Okay. Worshippers of the Xenos. Mm -hmm. We've got the uh so there's a background. Cult eating some space marines. <laughs> We've got cults trying to eat some more space marines, but uh, I think the blood angel is that a blood angel? Looks like it, doesn't it? It's very orangey. Mm. Yeah, must be the old old paint, blood angel orange. Yeah, he's got a chalice on him. Yeah, yeah. He's doing a bit less luck attacking the blood angel. Cool. Oh, I thought he was uh, jumping at him, going Bob. No. Which one's Bob? The space marine. The, the space marine. Fair enough. These circles. <laughs> um. Mm. So much like the, the models from um, Overkill Overwatch. so far. Yeah, Overkill, Overwatch. Overkill Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch Overkill. <laughs> Ghost Star Quintus again. That's the story from Overkill. Mm -hmm. The creation of a cult. Oh, the life cycle of a cult. Alright. That's quite interesting. So we have the Patriarch, the first generation, to the Aberrants, to the second generation. We have a little cycle going on there. Third generation, fourth generation. They make the cult vehicles, obviously. Magus, Magus, and familiars come from this fourth generation. And then we go all the way around to the fifth generation. So it does explain this in Overkill as well, but this is actually a really cool drawing. Mm. You've got Primus up there as cool. well. Cool, and the Primus. And hybrid metamorphs, they're new as well. Carry on. Uh, a parasitic order. So again, we've got like command structures that like are getting most codexes. All right. uh, the Cult of War. Some more background information. I need to read through all this. Creed really cool. Beneath. Creed Beneath. The First Curse. The Doting Throng. Subterranean Curse. Uprising, is that? Or Brood Cycle. There we go. I think those are some of the formations later on. Uh, do you see the Cults of the Imperium? The Inner Worm. Like the inner ear, I suppose. The rusted claw. Mm -hmm. The hive cult. Uh, you got the pauper the princes. Pauper princes. The twisted helix. The twisted helix. The bladed cog. cog. Oh, that one. Yeah. Bladed cog. Carry on. And, then you've and got the bands. glory. All oh, these banners are cool. That's the pauper princes. The first one. Bladed cog. Obviously. Mm. Yes. Yeah, oh, it's very mechanicum. I know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like they've, the cog and everything. They've in, infiltrated because uh, the top thing is a Skitar, uh, It's Skitari head. Yeah. Yeah. Not Skitari, but the. Um, um, yeah. What was it called? Yeah, the leader. Yeah. The adept head. I'm sure, someone will tell us in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, obviously going to be. Yeah, I'm just reading the stuff. Tech Priest, that was what it was. That's it. <laughs> there we go. I like this purple one again. Mm. Cool. Lost to read through. High Fleet's Descent. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the picture Patriot. of the Patriarch. Big bloated gene stealer. What's Eating he's a, scoffing? Looks like somebody's spine spinal column and yeah. brain and head. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's quite a good picture actually. I know it's gruesome, but it's uh, Yeah. <laughs> I like the artwork in this. Yeah. It is very good. Magus um, and the Magus Primus. Magus the Primus, so we know, we'll learn about them in here if we don't already know. Um, acolyte hybrids, hybrid metamorphs—the new thing. Um, so 
What's that one? So they come out when the bio fleet's near the system. Okay. There is even more mutated mm -hmm. neophyte, neophyte hybrids. hybrids. They're the ones that are, are like in the garden stuff. It's hiding in the garden. Oh right, okay. You've got pure, pure strains, strain. aberrants, aberrants, goliaths. These are the vehicles. The two variants. The sort of like imagine this is the transport vehicle, and that's the one with the huge grain on the front. Yeah. Sweet. Won't like to be in the front of that one. Sentinels, because they can have sentinels. Can they? Yeah, my, my sentinels might get repurposed now. Oh, and uh, Lehman Rust battle tanks. Awesome sauce. Mm. And the hidden dynasties. So again, we have like a timeline almost going on there of the infestation all the way to the Gold Star Quintus and all the way, which is where all the, the kills set. Yep. Yeah. A bit more timeline. Yep. And then we've got the colours. The colours. So the Cult of the Four Armed Emperor, which is the one again from Overkill, which is a very cool colour scheme. Mm. I do like that colour scheme. I haven't painted my Overkill stuff yet, so we might get the painting guides for we this. We might. I think it, I think we went through which what what uh, painting schemes has got in it, didn't we? Yeah. It's I got the cog one in it, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it might be in here as well. At least yeah. some drawings of them anyway. Yeah. The rusted, rusted claw. Rusted claw, yeah. That's so, in it, isn't it? Because it's the, one the was, orange, the yeah. yellowy orange. Orangey colour. Yeah. Hive cult. She's got greens. Oh, that's quite greens. an interesting colour. It's okay. different. Bladed cob. Bladed cob. That's the one. So that's like uh, corn red and um, the dark elder colours. Yeah, incubi. Yeah, incubi and darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Probably won't do them then because no, the dark be... elder of those colours. Yeah. Um, infestations beyond, beyond number. number. So, Beam of Thunder Cult. So that's Star Kindred. Yeah. Uh, Sons of Jormand. I think they're in the, they're in there, the yeah. painting guide. So you've got the Pauper Princes. Pauper so, Princes. Um, blessed Wormlings. And the Cult Hydra. They're yeah. in the painting guide as well, I'm sure they are. Uh, the Grand Uprising. There we go. Some more actual photos. <laughs> cool. Some guardsmen as well. Mm. Um, again, there we go. That's the yellow and yeah, and that's going to be the guard sprue where you get the these little heads with it. It's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so we got fighting ultramarines. Mm. Fighting the still ultramarines, still ultramarines, and also ultramarines. Uh, what's that? This that's the death of death, death watch. watch. Yeah. Excellent. Oops, I. Oh, are these the are these gonna be the high? These are the aberrants because they must be coming out with some models for them. Looks like it doesn't. They're like the ones from Overkill. Maybe that is just loads of them from Overkill. I mean, and they've changed them. But then again, this guy's got little growth things on that the one in Overkill doesn't have. Mm. No, is it growth things or is it just really? It might just be his hand actually. Oh, I've got overexcited though. It's his hand. It's just a blurred picture. I want to see some new aberrants because I like those models. There's something new as well. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'll be doing a box set. They are in the box, so. We've got some actual pictures of the models. So this is the Iron Ward. If, Icon Ward, sorry. If you've not seen that, that's the standard bearer kind of thing for the cult and they can rally around him. Um, we've got the Goliath truck. I really like this vehicle. Um, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. I've seen a lot of people liking it. I've seen a lot of people not liking it for various reasons. I really like it. Uh, I do. I think it goes well with the army. For for what they are, they need something miney. It's just bulky and miney. Yeah. It's, the only it's... thing I don't get is what this is. Because if it was a mining vehicle, why would it have cans on? Obviously they've replaced it, but what was here before which had this round fitting? So I want to know. Maybe a drill. It could have been a drill. Maybe it was some like a sort drill of that went straight ahead. Maybe it was just a searchlight or something. Maybe it I don't was, know. so they could watch. But it's, it's, obviously, this has been made for something, and every purpose it's put guns on. I just want to know what the original thing. Was. <laughs> and here's the uh, massive drill. I love this. That's nasty, isn't it? Just cuts these things. Oh man. You'd think if you saw that coming towards you, you'd be like, "Yeah, this is it now." Yeah. And look at the side of that flamer. I'll have to look at that in a minute. Nasty. 
So you got different variants of the models, which you'll see uh, also today uh, mm -hmm. when, when those videos go up. Because we've got uh, got one of each box set to start with. <laughs> the drill, yeah. The, drill. Well, the, the saw, even. Yeah. See, so you've got the saw. They've got a drill in that box set as well, and they've got the rock cutter. Which is cool. That's one pictures. Picture. So, yeah. Alright. So this is like the, the Curion thing, the cold attachment. So we've got loads of the cult, the first curse, and the blood cover. And these will be the um, HQ choices. By the looks of it, command, yeah. So you can have zero to three, so you don't have to take any of these, but you probably will do. So Patriot, Magus, Primus, or Acolyte, Icon War. So you can have the Icon War guy as a character. First curse, Patriarch, or one unit of pure strain gene steals. Oh, there we go. So that's uh, like the, the main uh, mm -hmm. gene steals that started it all off. Uh, and a brood cover, which is the Patriarch, Magus, and Primus. So that's interesting. So we'll see them in a minute. The Cult Father, if you choose a Patriarch from this detachment as your Warlord, you can re roll the result when rolling on the Warlord traits table. We've also got the uprising generations in the making. All non vehicle units and detachments can have the infiltrate special rule. You already have the infiltrate special rule, have shrouded special rule during the first turn of the game. In addition, this is the best part, you can add one to all your reserve rolls, and the enemy has to subtract one from all their reserve rolls. Oh, that's nasty. Um, numbers beyond counting, I like this one as well. I'll have to zoom the camera in a bit, actually, because I'm just reading this out and people can't see it. Bear with me. Hopefully you can see that now. Yeah, numbers beyond counting. Each time a unit from this detachment arrives from ongoing reserves, it is reinforced. So you can return six D6 models to that unit that was slain previously. So with as you'll see later on there's the shrouded rules. Oh, in the shadows rules, which means you can jump back into the shadows. So put back into the reserve any time. Mm. And then they've got their cult ambush rules, which means that they can come out and have various effects. And then you can use this to sort of get some of your models back again before they come out again. Wow. So it's pretty nasty. So yeah, those are the three command formations. And we have the core, which is the brood cycle, which seems to be made up of just um, infantry. By the looks of it, there's a lot of infantry there. That's mainly a lot of the new stuff. Um, you could have the rock riders in that as well, though. Um, and then you got Neophyte Cavalcade, which is more tank based, and they got Sentinels in there, and you got the Neophyte Hybrid in there as well. So you have that as an option if you want to bring the Lean Russes. You can bring a tank squadron. You can bring Sentinel squadrons in. So that that's more of the uh, turn the guard and stuff like that than there. And this is more of the miners and stuff. Then we have the Doting Throne, which is a Magus, optional. And three to six of any of the following Neophyte Hybrids and Acolyte Hybrids. Some training Uprising, Primus, one to three units of Hybrid Metamorphs, two to four units of Acolytes Hybrids, and zero to three units of Aberrants. Demolition Claw. Two to three units of Acolyte Hybrids and two to three units of uh, Goliath Rock Grinders. I imagine they're going to have like bombs and stuff. Mm. I think it's called a demolition core. Deliverance Blood Surge, which is Neophyte Hybrids, just lots of them. We've got Shadow Skulkers, which is one unit of Pure Strain Gene Stealers. We've got the Cult Mutant, which is one unit of Aberrant, so Hybrid Metamorphs. Um, Brood Brothers, which is a you know, sentinels or armor sentinels or one lemur squad. So there's lots of little bits you can make up there. So you could take the, the brood cycle and still make up lemur rust tanks if you really want to put them awesome. on. But we'll see what the special rules feature them as we go along. So uh, one second. So we have special weapons, flamer, grenade launcher, and Weber, which hasn't been around for a long time. Uh, heavy mining weapons, heavy stubber, mining laser, and a seismic cannon. Heavy weapons, uh, which is mortars, autocannons, heavy bolters, missile launchers, again they get to all three variants of missiles, last cannons, pistol weapons, last pistol, bolt pistol, and web pistol. <laughs> I really want to use the web weapons again, it's been a long time since I've seen them. 
Uh, melee weapons, chain sword, power mole, power pick. Um, cult equipment for the vehicles is a dozer blade, heavy silver or storm bolt, and hunter killer missile. Sacred relics are there. Won't go through them until we get to the end. But we have patriarch. So here he is, ninety points. He is like a brood lord, really. What have we got? Uh, patriarch's claws, bulky cult ambush. Fear, fearless fleet. Independent character infiltrates, moves recover, psycho master level one, return to the shadows, unquestioning loyalty, um, living idol, friendly units of Jesus occult faction that are within 12 inches of this model of fearless, patriarch generates powers from biomancy, brood mind and telepathy disciplines, and may upgrade to level two, and may be accompanied by up to two familiars. Ooh. Which is cool. Excellent. Then we have Magus, who's 40 points. And he's got Auto Pistol and a Force Stave, Admantium Will, Cult Ambush, Independent Character, Infiltrate, Psycho, Master Level 1. Return to the Shadows, uh, Unquestionable Loyalty, Spiritual Leader, Friendly Units within the New Skill Cult Faction that are within 12 inches of the model have Admantium Will Special Rule, which is cool. And Magus generates his powers from Biomancy, Broodmind, and Telepathy Disciplines. Uh, may upgrade to level 2 and may take items from the Sacred Relic Cults and maybe accompany by up to 2 familiars. <laughs> so plenty of use for familiars that we've yeah. got. Which I'm glad to see, they're not just, they're not just models fluff. for overkill. Yeah. I'm glad to see you can actually use them. Now we've got the Primus. Again, these are all the models. They'll probably do in the future Variants. different models, but for yeah. now, they are just the models that you get in overkill. I think they're doing a box set of these separate. Mm. But um, if you've already got the overkill box, like, you don't need to go in and buy the, any extras, you can use them. So he comes with a needle pistol, bone sword, rending claws, blasting charges, toxin injector. He's got a cult ambush, hatred, independent character, infiltrate, tender shadows, and unquestioned loyalty. He's a demigog, which means friendly use in the UCL cult faction, that within 12 inches, can have the hatred special rule. And he can also take the relics of the cult as he weighs at 75 points. The Icon Ward, which we've been hearing a lot about, 65 points. He has an Alter Pistol, Rending Claws, Blasting Charge, and the Sacred Cult Banner. Cult Ambush, Feel No Pain, 6 Plus, Independent Character, Return to Shadows, Unquestioning Loyalty. The Nexus of Devotion, which is his um, ability, Friendly user, the use of the faction that within 12 inches of any Icon Wards, have the Feel No Pain, 6 Plus special rule. Malls that already have fuel no pain excluded from Macalette Wars, especially will add one to their fuel no pain roll. So we've already got it, we'll go to five and so on. And he can take relics as well. So he's actually pretty useful character, isn't he? So Acolyte Hybrids. So we're on to the troop section. 40 points for five. Um, they come with auto pistols, close combat weapons, rending claws, and blasting charges. Come to ambush and return to the shadows. These are the two. Main rules which make Gene Steelers awesome. If you haven't seen them, I'll get to them later. Um, may include 15 additional acolyte hybrids for 8 points. Every model plays a pistol with a hand filmer for 5 points. Demolition charge 20 points. Heavy rock drill 20 points. Heavy rock cutter 25. And heavy rock saw 25 points. One acolyte hybrid may take a cult icon for 10 points. And one will be an acolyte leader for 10 points. And he can have a bone sword um, for 20 points. And he can have a lash whip and a bone sword for 25 points. So we've got another unit can take a Goliath truck as a dedicated transport. So the truck's definitely a dedicated transport for them. The neophytes, going at uh, 10 points more. But you get twice as many of them. You get uh, whole 10. They come with uh, auto guns. Uh, auto pistol, close combat weapon, blasting charges. Only the hybrids come with auto guns. Only neophyte leader comes with blasting charges. Neophyte's weapon team for all purposes. Each neophyte weapons team is a single model with the bulky special rule. For example, it may only fire one weapon in the shooting phase. Only gains one additional attack for charge and only counts as one model for morale checks. We include 10 additional neophyte hybrids, so they can go up to a unit of 20. The unit can do one of the following, uh, the five points each, I should have said. Um, two Neophyte Hybrids may each take an item from the Heavy Minings list. 
two Neophyte Hybrids may form a Neophyte Weapons team and must take one item from the Heavy Weapons list. So you can either take them as Mining, which means you can take two items, mm -hmm. or you take them as basically like an Imperial Guards Heavy Weapon platform. Um, so that when, that's when you can get the last cannons and stuff oh, like that. Cool. So that's, that's your choice between the box set we've got now and the box set they're bringing out, which is the Imperial Guard variant. Yeah. Two new fire hybrids can each take an, one item from the, the special weapons list. So you can do one of the following, which is to take the heavy weapons, uh, which means two can take a heavy weapon each, if I read that correctly. Two new fire hybrids may each take a item from the heavy yeah so two can take heavy weapons and two near fights may each take an item from the special weapons so you can have two special and two heavy weapons in the squad nasty that's crazy any model can replace an auto gun with a shotgun or a last gun for free one near fight hybrid may take a cult icon for 10 points may upgrade one near fight hybrid to a near fight leader for 10 points a near fight leader may take items from the pistol and melee weapons list the unit may take a Goliath truck or a Chimera uh, as a dedicated transport. So they're bringing out the, is it a armoured claw they call it? Yes. Where it's the Chimera and ten models. Yeah. With the genie still ahead. Right. That's coming out soon. So. Mm -hmm. And we have the hybrid Metamorphs, 45 points. They come with Autopistols, Renin Claws, Metamorph Talon, Blasting Charges, Cult Ambush and Return to the Shadows. May include up to five additional hybrid metamorphs. Any model can do one of the following: replace rending claws and metamorph talon with two metamorph talons for free. Replace the metamorph talon with a metamorph claw for two. Replace metamorph talon with a metamorph whip for two. One model may be upgraded to a metamorph leader. A metamorph leader can take a bone sword. Any metamorph, any model, so it may replace its autopsis with a hand flamer. Any model can replace it, so you can have an entire squad of flamers. Oh, cool. Right, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, one hybrid metamorph may take a cult icon. One unit may take a Goliath truck as a... Sorry, the unit. So it's not one unit. So there we go. We have pure strains. So for 70 points. I think that's the same price as the... I think it is. Don't quote me on that. I think it's about the same price as a squad from Tyranids. We'll have to check on that. Yeah, don't quote me on that. I think it's the same. Uh, same stats anyway, I can tell you that. Rending claws they come with. Cult ambush, which is great. Fleet infiltrate me through cover and return to shadows, also great stealth. Brood instinct, only Patriarch can join this unit, and while Patriarch is joined to this unit, they gain furious charge. Which is a very good reason to give it to them. Um, <laughs> hyper reflexes. Pure strain users have a 5 plus invulnerable save. And it may include 15 additional pure strains, as 5 in starting, 14 points each. And they can take scything talons. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very, very. At 120 points for four aberrants. Very odd number. Yeah. But I do have four aberrants because that's the that comes in overkill. Mm. Maybe that's why. Uh, it's unlike it's unusual games workshop doing that. They're very expensive. Oh, they are, aren't they? For, for what they are. Well, we've got weapon skill four, with skill one, strength five, toughness four. Okay, two wounds, initiative two. Um, attacks to leadership 8 to 5 plus additional aberrants are 30 points each and uh, any model may replace its power pick with a power hammer but free so we've got power picks and power hammers start with power picks and random claws cut ambush, fill no pain, stubborn and return to the shadows I mean they're expensive but they have a high strength mm. with power weapons mm. I'll have to see about that I'll have to try them out Right, Chimera. As we know, it's pretty much a Chimera. Uh, nothing different there apart from we can take the Colt vehicle equipment. It's just standard Chimera running at 65 points. Uh, Sentinels come with multi lasers, just like the Imperial. Uh, Include up to two additional Sentinels, 40 miles each. Same sort of uh, equipment as. Imperial versions. Sky Sentinels. Again, I think they are exactly the same. Why wouldn't they be? To be honest. And then we have the Goliath truck. Weighing in at 50 points. 
It has a heavy stubber and a twin linked auto cannon. So it's not bad mm -hmm. uh, for transport. Um, rugged construction. This model suffers a crew stunned, crew shaken, or immobilized result. Roll a dice on a four more, ignores the results, but still loses a home point. Very equipped with a cache of demolition charges for 20 points. And there we go. It's a pretty good vehicle, actually. Mm. Uh, front arm is 11. Three whole points for skill three. Then we have the Goliath Rock Rhino, took away 25 points more. It's the heavy sport choice. It's a heavy, sort of a heavy mining laser. The drill dozer blade. It can carry six models. It's got a uh, rear platform for the fire point, access points. So it's not open top to visit. So they've got a rear platform, but they're not open top. It's a bit weird. Not that I'm really complaining that much, just saying. Uh, <laughs> Rugged construction like the uh, normal Goliath. And it can may include up to two additional Goliath rock grinders as the squadron. Uh, any Goliath rock grinder may be equipped with a cache of demolition charge for 20 points. Any Goliath rock, rock grinder may place a heavy mining laser with one of the following. A clearance incinerator for 5 points. Or a heavy seismic cannon for 10 points. I don't know what they do. Mm. I don't know what they do. Then we have the Luminous Battle Tank coming in at 120 points. This is actually a squadron, so they can take a squadron. Excellent, 120 points each. And I think we have all the options we have from the. Uh... Yep, I think we've got all the basic. Eradicator Nova Cannon. So it starts with the Eradicator Nova Cannon, and you upgrade it to a Battle Cannon for 30 points. Right. So now we have the formations. So the subterranean uprising, which was, as we said before, that's a primus. One three units of hybrid metamorphs, two to four units of acolyte hybrids, and zero to three units of aberrants. You all gain the infiltrate rule. And uh, time to rise up. All the units in the subterranean uprising must infiltrate during deployment and set up using the cult ambush special rule. Not really a, a, a drawback. When rolling on the cult ambush table for using this formation, roll two dice instead of one and choose either results. That's good. <laughs> that, that doubles your chances of getting what you want. Mm. Uh, meticulous planner. If a unit in this formation has been joined by a primus, you can roll three dice instead of one when rolling on the cult ambush table for this unit. And select any one of the results. Okay. <laughs> So, I'm just going to read that again. The unit's formation has been joined by Primus, which you can take anyway as part of the formation. You can roll three dice instead of one when rolling on the cult ambush table for this unit. So, you're rolling three dice now? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Why even make it random? Just <laughs> I was looking at that guy, he looks cool. Yeah, rock render. <laughs> and this is Deliverance Blood Surge. Two six units of Neophyte Hybrids. Reckless fanaticism. All units and nearby hybrids from the Deliverance Blood Surge must begin the game embarked upon the Goliath trucks. These can disembark even if the vehicle is moving at cruising speed, although each model that does so must make a dangerous terrain test. And then we have each time a vehicle from this formation suffers a crew stunned or a crew shaken result, that's ignored, uh, though the vehicle still loses the whole point, so you don't have to roll for it anymore basically. That's interesting, mm -hmm. if you like your trucks. Demolition Claw. So two, three units of Acolyte Hybrids and two, three units of Goliath Rock Grinders. At least one model in each unit of Acolyte Hybrids must be equipped with Demolition Charges. Our Goliath Rock Grinders must also be equipped with a cache of Demolition Charges. This upgrade costs no points. So that's just for the trucks, the trucks don't cost any points, I would read that as. Yeah, because, yeah, it's two sentences, so just the trucks cost no points, not the actual guys. So they get tank hunters, they get demolition specialists, so that's basically the end of Titans and such like, knights. Mm -hmm. um, I caught a high from a demolition clock and re-roll scatter dice when using demolition charge, or a cache of demolition charge when embarked upon a... Life rock round from this formation. Extra explosives roll a dice each time a model throws a demolition charge that's within six inches of a Goliath rock rounder from the same formation. 
On a forum where that model replenishes its explosives, I can throw another demolition charge during the battle. So it's not a one shot item anymore. Root cycle. So this is the main core, which you're probably going to want, uh, which has got an icon ward, which is fair enough. Three units of acolyte hybrids, two units of neophyte hybrids, one unit of hybrid metamorphs, one unit of pure strain utilities, zero to one units of aberrants, and zero to one units of rock grinders. So these get the familial pride. Any non vehicle unit in this formation that's within six inches of at least one of the units from the same formation adds one to both its leadership and its weapon skill. Okay. Hold Havana High. All units in this formation have the furious charge bash rule while they're in 24 inches of the Icon Ward. In addition to the range of the, of the Acolyte's Icon Ward, its Nexus of Devotion special rule will affect units from this formation that are in 24 inches of him instead of just 12. The first curse. Okay, so this is one Patriarch. And one unit of pure strange gene stealers. The unit of pure strange gene stealers must contain 20 models. Strange mutations. Before the start of the game, roll on a dice and apply the following result to the first curses unit of pure strange gene stealers for the duration of the game. Flash hooks. Unit doesn't suffer the penalty for initiative when charging enemies through the difficult terrain. So rolling a one is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, hardened car paces. The unit's armor saves increased to four plus. It's all right. Toxin sacks, uh, assaulting glands, sorry, the unit's melee weapons are poisoned, good. Adrenaline sacks, the unit has the rage special rule, feeder tendrils, the unit has a preferred enemy special rule, very good. And preferred killing machine, choose the result you wish to apply to the unit. <laughs> I quite actually quite like the, the flash hooks idea. Yeah. Because um, they used to be able to take them as, as just an upgrade. Mm. And it's very good for, for um, charging enemies through difficult terrain cover and stuff. So... If you can get a six and you can pick whichever one you, you want. If you get a one or a six, you can take that. Yeah. I could see uses for all them, like yeah. feeder tendrils. They're awesome as well. All of the models with feeder tendrils. They're like mini yeah. uh, lictors. <laughs> yeah. Little baby wannabe yeah, lictors. They're all, they're awesome. You've got a neophyte cavalcade, which is your other core choice. Two units of neophyte hybrids, one Lehman Rust squadron, and one to two units of any combination of scout sentinels or armor sentinels. Each unit of neophyte hybrids must take a Shamir as a dedicated transport. That's the restriction. Uh, mechanized ambush. This formation units uh, of neophyte hybrids must start the game within their transports. Vehicles in this formation have the outflank special rule. Let's get sentinels from this formation instead of getting the cult ambush special rule. Um, which is quite good for sentinels. <laughs> cult ambush. Okay. Um, whoa. So if you've got like. Three armored sentinels with last cannons. Mm. You can call ambush them. No, oh, just scout ones, is it? Oh, that's good. God, that was scaring me for a minute. <laughs> uh, just the scout ones, sorry. Um, devoted crew. Roll dice for each time a vehicle has this formation. It's crew stunned, so it's like, like the all plus two now crew stunned for shaking results. The doting throng. I said throng. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Zero one Magnus. Magus. Magnus. Magnus. <laughs> it's called Magnus Damn. now. Magnus Ferris. Magnus and three and to six song. units of I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Fulgrim did to him after took his head off, I really don't want to know. Um, three to six of the following units uh, Neophyte hybrids, Acolyte hybrids. No restrictions. Friendly Devotion, units from this formation have the Zealot special role whilst they're in 12 inches of a friendly Megas. Furthermore, a unit that is actually joined by a Megas can re-roll the failed hits in every round of close combat, not just the first. Okay. Willing subject, if a Megas targets a Neophyte hybrid or an Acolyte hybrid from this formation with a Blessing Psychic Power, he can re-roll the Psychic Test if it's failed. Mm. Useful. A Brood Coven. This is where you're going to be going if you just want to use the three leaders, which is a Patriot, Magus, and Primus. Again, that's what you're getting overkill if you've already got it. Mm -hmm. Lords of the Brood. The three models of a Brood Coven must be deployed as a single unit. They can still join friendly units, but if one does so, all of the Brood Coven models must join the same unit. Similarly, if one Brood Coven model leaves a unit, all the Brood Coven models must also leave that unit. 
they must form back into a new unit composed of independent characters. Okay, so you can't really split them up much. Uh, the Brew Coven and unit and any unit they have joined have the following special rules while re relevant model from the formation is still alive. Patriarch gives them fleet, the Meg gives them counter strike, can, sorry, counter strike, counter attack, and the Primus gives them preferred enemy. All good rules. That's the uh, Death Watch, my other favourite army. These are probably my two favourite armies, and the two last ones I've got out. Um, do you see the cult special rules? So, cult ambush. Use with this special rule that infiltrate or arrive for reserve or ongoing reserve can choose to roll on the cult ambush table opposite instead of deploying or arriving normally. Uh, so, the cult ambush table. Oh, is that. It's here. If you haven't seen this already, uh, I'll be very surprised. But the results for the, this, because this is like the main thing for them. This is their main ability. And unless you're taking the Imperial Guard versions, you're going to be wanting to know what this is. So you basically roll a dice and then you find out what happens. On a one, the ambush unit moves onto the board from your own table ledge. So that's rubbish. Uh, encircling the foe. Roll d6 and on 1 to 2 the ambush comes in from the table edge to your left or 3 to 4 to your right and 5 to 6 you can choose left or right. Lying in wait, so now we're getting serious. Set up the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than 9 inches away from an enemy unit. You can alternatively set up the ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than 6 inches away from an enemy model so long as no enemy model can draw a line of sight to them. If you can hide behind something, all better. A perfect ambush with four. Set up the ambush unit anywhere on the table that is more than six inches away from an enemy model. Okay, a deadly trap for five. Now we're getting really serious. After placing, this is basically the same as the last one, but after placing the ambush unit, you can immediately make a bonus shooting attack. As well, where you're shooting phase, this does not prevent the unit from shooting again in the ensuing shooting phase. These bonus shooting attacks cannot cause morale checks. But they do have the pinning special rule. If the ambushing unit does not have any ranged weapons, it can instead choose to run in the movement phase. And the one the G Steelers want to get, a six. So set up an ambushing unit anywhere on the table that is more than three inches away from an enemy unit. So basically right next to them. A lot of other units that infiltrate or arrive via reserves, an ambushing unit can change charge in their first turn or on the turn they arrive from reserves. So they're going straight in. <laughs> yeah, I'm just Nasty. tearing things apart. Now we combine that with their other special. Come over here, which is Return to the Shadows. So instead of moving in your movement phase, any unit with a special rule that is not within six inches of an enemy model can be removed from the battlefield and placed into the ongoing reserve. A unit cannot return to the shadows in the same turn it arrives from ongoing reserves and can't do so whilst embarked on a vehicle, which is both fair enough. Mm -hmm. So basically, with the rules you had before, you you say you roll five or a six, you mm -hmm. run and shoot or attack, do the damage you want to do, get out before you, well, you'd have to suffer a turn of shooting or attacking. So you, you you can you get to choose your targets. So that's the main part of this: is choosing your targets, yeah. taking out the, the, the models that come out of position or the ones that have already been wounded, or the ones you really have to get rid of. You can just focus on them and then run away. And then you get to heal a unit up D6 models and come back again. Wow. So it's, it's just... That's nasty. It's, it's the constant putting your enemy under pressure. Because yeah. they're, they're not going to know where you're going to come from. They're going to be... They can't make a battle line. They can't... They can't no objective safe. Yeah. They can't... You're just going to be all over them all the time and away again. So some other rules they've got, which they mentioned before, is Unquestioned Loyalty, which is basically a model with a special rule cannot only pass... Yeah, look, just look at Cyril, and it can even use it when it's in close combat, basically fighting a challenge. So, basically, the, the subjects are that fanatically devoted, they will always jump in front of a bullet. Or even the sword, in this case, or any kind of threat. And then we have the warlord traits. Um, Shadowstalker gives them stealth. Focus Federation, friendly units in your GC the cult faction have the counter attack special while they're in 12 inches for Warlord, which is good. War Creeper, your Warlord has a move through cover special. In addition, your Warlord has and his 
unit. They have a sort of penalty for their initiative, charging through difficult terrain, and that can be useful. Uh, born Survivor. Born Survivor. Your Warlord has it will not die special rule. Uh, Alien Majesty. All models in your Warlord detachment can use his leadership in place of their own. That's good. Um, ambush Leader. Uh, when using the Cult's Ambush special rule with your Warlord or any unit that has joined you do not roll on the cut on the table, you can just choose the result you wish to apply. <laughs> okay, there you go. Like I said, you may as well just choose the result you wish to apply. I wow. choose that one. <laughs> so you've prepared to actually Warlord, and he's with a bunch of genius dealers. I'm just going to choose a six. <laughs> yeah. That's if you roll a six on this, but you do get to re-roll your Warlord trait if you use your Warlord. Mm. So you've got two chances of getting a six. Uh, but I never build a strategy around the wall of trade table anyway, because you can't guarantee what you're going to get. Allies. So, everybody has come the apocalypse. Apart from Tyranids and Astra Militarum, which are allies of convenience. I don't know why Astra Militarum. Um, yeah, well, I suppose they could have half infiltrated them, but not mm. completely. Um, Tyranids, I don't agree with that at all. They should be Battle Brothers, end of. Yeah. They're not different armies, they're the same army. They're all going to get eaten in the end. Mm. Even if they don't quite realise it yet, when the hive mind takes over, that's it, they've no choice. I thought that was the whole point of Gene Steeler cults, that they are yeah. tyrannids that infiltrate via politics kind of thing, or the military. I suppose what they say is they don't know that they're going to get eaten. But by the time the hive mind turns up, it doesn't matter. No. You don't have a choice anymore. No. You're controlled by your patriarch, and the patriarch's controlled by the hive mind, so you're going to get eaten. Yeah. And you're going to be that fanatic about it, you're just going to do it. You, you're not going to realise the danger you're in. No. Even if you care anymore, which most of these guys don't look like they even care anymore. No. They are, half of them are mainly tyrannid anyway. Yeah. Especially so, if you get to like fifth generation, surely you kind of. Well, they look completely human. Yeah. They're just like, but they're nid. But you're nid inside, yeah. So, I still think we should battle with other tyrannids. Mm. Um. I just do. Law wise, I do. Rule wise, it might be a good thing not to do that, but law wise, I definitely yeah. should. So, uh, ranged weapons. So, there's the list of ranged weapons from 40k. What else do we have? Okay, well, let's have a zoom in. We have the clearance incinerator, which was an upgrade for the rock grinder. Uh, this is a strength 5, AP4, assault 1, torrent. A template weapon. Nice. Demolition charge, uh, which is uh, 6 plus 6 inch range, eight, strength 8, AP 2, assault 1, large blast, 1 use only, of course, unless you've got a stash of them on board your uh, Goliath. Mm -hmm. uh, grenade launcher, frag and crack grenades, uh, pretty standard. Uh, the Unus turret weapons, yeah, they're all the ones we know. Mining lasers, so we've got a heavy mining laser. And a mining laser. Mining laser is 24. Heavy mining laser is 36. Both strength 9, both AP2. Both heavy 1, so it's literally just a range. Um, not that I'm complaining, but uh, basically a last cannon. It's a short range last cannon. Um, then we have mortars. They're the same needle pistols. Strength X, AP6, pistol and poison T. Plus. Seismic cannon weapons. We have the seismic cannon and the heavy seismic cannon. So they've got two sets of ranges. Um, strength 8, AP3, strength 5, AP4. Uh, and then they've got heavy 2, heavy 4, heavy 3, heavy 6. So you get more shots. And they've all got resonance. Two wound rolls and armor penetration rolls of a 6 made with this weapon. This special rule always resolved at AP1. So it just kills everything. So it's it's just like a bit of a range weapon. The closer the range they are, the more damage it does, which makes sense. Because it's really if you're cutting into rock, isn't it? Mm -hmm. These seismic weapons. The web weapons. My new favourite thing. Uh, web pistol. Range 12. Weber. Range 16. Strength 3 and 4, respectively. AP star. Pistol blast cocooned. And assault 1 blast cocooned. Cooned. The AP value of a wound caused by this weapon is equal to the current strength characteristic of the model it was allocated to. 
For example, if a wound from a web weapon was allocated to space marine strength 4, that wound resolved at AP4. Uh, at AP4. So, it didn't have much of an effect on space marines, I'll still get the saves. Unless it's a scout. Um, against vehicles or models with strength of 7 or more, this weapon is AP nothing. So the higher your strength, the better you are against it. But if you're a lowly guardsman, or even an elder, mm -hmm. or a tau, or any other race, <laughs> then you're <laughs> an orc. You might be alright if you're an orc. What's an orc? What's strength 3? Um, yeah, it, it's equal to your AP. So if you're an aspect warrior, you're absolutely stuffed. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cool aspect warrior. No, you're dead. <laughs> okay. Right. Melee weapons. The bone sword. So that gets life drain. Any winter over six, maybe this weapon has the instant death special one. Heavy rock cutter. So that's strength times two, AP two, melee snip, two handed, unwieldy. So basically a power fist, but two handed power fist. With snip, which is when a model so there's one or more and save wounds from this weapon, it must pass a separate toughness test for each wound suffered or be removed. Okay. Mm, nasty. Uh, heavy rock drill, which is the same, apart from it has pulverise. When a model with this heavy rock drill makes a close combat attack, it instead makes a single pulverise attack. If it does so, roll to it as normal, but resolve the attack with strength 10 AP will. Alright, yeah, I like that one. Um, heavy rock saw. Times two and two AP. It's exactly the same. Comes with armor bane though. Yeah. It's exactly the same but with armor bane. You got lash with bone sword combo, much like a tyranid one. Uh, with life dream and lash, which is opposite. Metamorph weapons, metamorph claw, which is they're all AP five. They're all the strength of the user. They just have these special abilities, so uh, the claw gets crush. A model equipped with a metamorph claw has a plus two bonus to strength during the fight subface. Scythe, a model equipped with a metamorph talon, has a plus one bonus to its weapon skill during the fight subphase. A model equipped with two metamorph talons has a plus two bonus to its weapon skill during the fight subphase instead. And a lash, a model equipped with a weapon with a lash for sure gets plus three bonus to its initiative during the fight subphase. All very useful. Patriarch Claws, um, AP3, melee, rending and shred, nice. Power Hammers, plus 3 to strength, AP2, melee, concussive, specialist weapon, two handed and unwieldy. The Power Pick, plus 2 to strength, AP3, melee and unwieldy. A rending Claws, uh, again, that's like nids. So it's AP5 million rending, scything talons, AP6 and melee. Okay. There's a lot to take in here. There is, isn't there? It's all awesome. It's like Christmas. Blasting charges. Well, there are some blasting charges in 40k. Cult icon. Almost in a unit with a cult item of plus one to weapon skill while the bear is alive. That was unexpected and cool. Uh, Gene Steeler familiar. And close combat a model with a genius so familiar makes its additional strength for AP attack. With the rending special rule, genius so familiar is represented by a separate miniature. Yeah. Always remains as close as possible to its master. The model itself is purely decorative and is ignored for game purposes. Just move it to one side if it gets in the way. Remove the familiar ones his master has been slain. So it's an extra little attack with the rending. Don't underestimate rending. Uh, sacred Cult Banner, friend of any units from the GC Cult Faction, 12 inches of the model. Sacred Cult Banner have the Furious Charge special rule, Toxin Injector. Well, the Toxin Injector fights with the Rending Claws. Um, those attacks have a Poison special rule. Okay. Cult Vehicle Equipment. Cash of Demolition Charges, which is 8 2, it's not 1 large blast. Uh, Alright, so every each time a vehicle equipped with demolition charge suffers a penetrating hit, roll a dice. On the roll of one, the vehicle suffers a further strength 8 AP2 hit after any initial damage has been resolved. So carrying these demolition charges is actually dangerous to the truck. Mm. <laughs> so that <laughs> does make sense, and even though it's a negative rule, I think it's quite cool. Yeah. Boom. Mm. Uh, the dozer blade. A vehicle with a drill dozer blade automatically passes dangerous terrain tests. When a vehicle with a drill draws a bed rams an enemy vehicle, it adds d6 to the strength of the hit. 
the ram causes a penetrating hit, add one to the result of the vehicle damage table. The vehicle with the drill dozer blade forms a tank shock. Each enemy unit that the vehicle reaches must take an initial test before taking a morale check. The initial test is passed, the unit avoids the whirring cutters. But if it's failed, the enemy loses D3 strength, 10 AP2 hits. If an enemy makes a death or glory attack against a vehicle with drill dozers and fails, stop the vehicle, the unit suffers an additional D3 strength, 10 AP2 hits. In addition to the damage they would normally suffer for the failed attack. Dear lord. Hits from a drill dozer blade are randomly allocated. And squishy. Yeah. Okay. So we have the sacred relics of the cult. Um, so the icon of the cult ascendant. Friendly units that have the genius of the cult faction that are within 12 inches of a model equipped with the icon of the cult ascendant have the furious charge special roll uh, and reroll fail morale pinning fear tests. In addition, the models in the same unit with the icon as the cult ascendant have a plus one attack while the bear is alive. Dagger of swift sacrifice. Okay, that is strength as user, melee instant death and poison too. Scourge of distant stars. The bearer is involved in a challenge, their opponents must pass a toughness test before any attacks are made. If the test is failed, the model immediately suffers a wound, with no saves of any kind allowed, and a minus one penalty to both for initiative and attacks, to a minimum of one. Until the end of the phase, the scourge of a distant star has no effect on vehicles. Okay. Uh, staff of the S Subterranean Master, Subterran Master even, range 18, strength 2, assault 10. Ignores cover and rending. Instead of shooting normally, the bearer can use the staff of the subterranean master to make a shooting attack with the following profile. So 10 dice for strength 2. <laughs> it's a lot of weak attack, but they do do rending. Mm. If you roll 6s, ignores cover as well. Uh, if you're rolling 10 dice as well. Um, yeah, I kind of like that one. Even though it's a low strength. I like lots of dice. Uh, Sword of the Void's Eye, plus 1 strength, AP 3. Melee, Bio Sentence, and Life Drain. Bio Sentence, the bearer can reroll, alt hit, and to wound rolls of a one when attacking with this weapon. Life Drain as before. Um, in close combat, a model accompanied by a Crouchling. The Crouchling. I didn't read that properly. If that's <laughs> the Crouchling. crouchling. Yeah, <laughs> makes two additional strength for AP attacks with a rending special. In addition, the bearer can generate one additional psychic power. This is basically familiar, isn't it? Called the Crouchling. Sounds like it. Yeah, in addition, it? the bearer can generate one additional psychic power at the start of the game. Crouchling is always represented by a separate miniature. Yeah. And that always remains as close as possible to its master. The model itself is purely decorative, is ignored for the game and purposes, and just move it to one side. So I really now want to make one of the little familiar sat on a couch. Because <laughs> I read that as Couchling the first time I read it. Sat on the couch. Little familiar sat on the couch to with his, beer. With a beer. With a beer, yeah, and his feet up. <laughs> I am the uh, crouch, couch lady. <laughs> the TV remote. <laughs> yeah, home oh Familiar. Good lord. Oh, brilliant. Getting late now. <laughs> the brood mind discipline. It's a primus power, which is mass hypnosis. It's a malediction. The target's a single enemy with 24 inches, whilst its power is in effect. The target's Weapon skill, ballistic skill, initiative are all reduced by one. Oh. So that's a Primus power. That's excellent. That's a Primus power, actually. Um, psychic Stimulus. It's a blessing. Types of a unit in 24 inches. Lots of combat. Whilst the power is in effect, the unit has the relentless and fleet special rules in addition. Type can charge even if it rounds during a between shooting phase. That's a lot of speed going on there and shooting at the same time. Mm -hmm. Sonic Blast. 24 inches, it's a witch fire power. Strength 5, AP 3, Assault 1 and Blast. Might from Beyond, it's a blessing. Tactics friendly within 24 inches, uh, gives them plus 1 to their strength and rage. Right. Uh, 4, Mental Onslaught. It's a focused witch fire power. In the row of 24, both the Psyker and the Target model roll dice are their leisure values. If the scores are drawn, the target model suffers a minus three. In so even if it's a draw, the target model suffers a minus three penalty to its initiative. And if the score is higher, uh, the target also suffers the number of wounds equal to the difference between the two scores. No armor or cover saves are allowed. Mm. Mind control. 
uh, targets and single non-vehicle model than 24 inches not locked in combat. That model will immediately make a shooting attack exactly if it were one of your own models. The model cannot make an attack that would cause it to hit itself or its own unit in any way. After resolving this shooting attack, the main control model immediately reverts back to the player's control. And then we have telepathic summons. Here we go. Each time a psychic power is used, choose whether it will have a warp charge 2 or 3. The choice must be made before the psychic test is taken. Telepathic summons is a conjuration spell. It creates a single unit and manifests a warp charge of 2. It creates one of the following units. Your choice. 5 acolyte hybrids, 5 hybrid metamorphs, 10 neophyte hybrids. If manifested warp charge 3, it instead creates one of the following units of your choice. 10 acolyte hybrids, 10 acolyte metamorphs. Four aberrants, eight pure stream juice drillers, or twenty neophyte hybrids. In any case, these units are equipped with any upgrades listed on their data sheet, but they cannot include any extra models or take the dedicated transport. These units always arrive using the cult ambush special role. So you can generate more models into your little ambush. So I'll not go through the tactical objectives, uh, but that is the end of the cover. Wow. That, in my opinion, is an excellent codex. Mm. Um, obviously, the codex power creep is evident there. Um, but I just love the juice of the cults. I think there's a lot of flavour in those rules as well as a lot of power. Um, how powerful they are, I'd have to actually test and see whether I think they were OP or not. Mm. I can see in my mind how I would use them, I think, jumping around the board, confusing the enemy. Um, yeah, doing I the uh, coming from the shadows and then going back into the shadows. That's something new, I think, for the whole army to be able to do that. That's something really new. Um, They've really is, thought about it. Which is hard to do when you've got so many armies that are special. Uh, <laughs> when you've got so many armies, yeah. you've got a fast army, you've got an assaulty army, you've got the, the, you know, an army that can regenerate itself. Yeah. How, how many different variants can you have? But I think they've made a good one with this. Yeah, they've really um, thought it out, haven't they, with what they wanted to do with them. Um, See, and they've made um, them interested. They've drawn me back in. <laughs> drawn me back into it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and this first look. I mm -hmm. mean, I need to go away and read the background and have a good look at combinations I can make. Uh, but so I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Codex. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope you join us for the models that we're putting together as well. We've got a unit of neophytes and a unit of hybrid, the two new ones that are out today yeah. to look at. So, Please join us for that. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Helps us out loads. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. See you soon. Take care, guys. Bye.